Good morning. Welcome back to Valuable Physical Education and our interview series with uh, Miss Angela McNamara. Today, she's going to be talking a little bit about her experience in charter schools and private schools and, and some of the differences that they may present versus a public school. And then she's also going to talk about some of her favorite units to do and maybe some, some units that are a little bit different than what other people have done in the past or, or maybe what we normally think of as, as physical education when we very first jump into it. A lot of times we think of team sports, but she's going to talk a little bit about some, some individual sports and some different things today. So thank you guys for listening and let's, uh, let's get right to the interview. I think between the three of us, we've all kind of been in public school, you've been in a private school, um, I know Kevin coaches at a private school. Um, I've been at a charter school now for um, 11 years, but I had years in a public school too. What do you think uh, some of the differences are between those different places? And um, I don't know how, I don't know. I don't know if there's a huge difference between uh, private and charter school, but um, what are maybe some of those differences, at least as a teacher going in, you know, if, if we got a new teacher who's looking at jobs, um, you know, they, they may think, oh, I, I have to get a job at a public school or um, I really want to get a job at a private school. Can you maybe give us some examples of some of the differences, uh, you know, the positive things that, that each one of those offers so that people know what they're kind of going into? Yeah. Um, you know, and again, this comes from my very specific experience. You know, I can only speak to the one private school I worked at and, um, you know, the few public um, and charter schools. But um, working in private school was definitely a really great experience for me. Um, there are definitely pros and cons to it. Um, I, I, I had a lot of resources available, um, you know, if I needed equipment or anything like that, um, I, there was definitely, um, a budget available for me. And if the school didn't want to provide it, there was families who were very willing to step in. So I think, you know, that demographic where there's families who are really engaged and, and have the, the means to provide. Um, so that, that was really, that was really great. You know, I could get creative. I could do different things that I was really excited about where, um, you know, I don't think that uh, I would have been able to ask for that, the, that equipment or those things um, in a private school or in a public school. I'm sorry. Um, on the flip side though, you know, in a private school, because everybody chooses to be there and everybody pays to be there. Um, you know, our students are more like customers sometimes, um, or our parents, I should say. So, you know, if parents are not um, maybe really into what you're doing, um, you know, and they, they might um, have some feedback about you to your directors, um, you know, their, their opinions often have a little bit more weight to it because, you know, like they're paying customers. And so I, I think there's like more of a customer service um, angle to that, that job. And I did feel like I, it was helpful for me to kind of play the, the politics maybe like, you know, like you, you, you got to put on a good face. You got to know, you know, you got to make sure you have a good in with the parents and, and people like you and that kind of thing. So I, that's not the experience I had in public schools and in the charter school that we're now in miles. I, I definitely don't, um, feel, feel that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that was cool to hear, uh, coach, you know, I, and like miles, uh, you know, the hats I worn is I've been at a private school. I've been at public, I've been at charter schools and in inner city underserved students. Um, and it, it, what I like though, about what I'm hearing from you is, you're a pretty diverse PE teacher. You've seen it all. And I, I think that that's only going to benefit your students. I think it'll benefit your coworkers and your admin team. Um, I think as a PE teacher, when you've kind of seen it all, and as you know, we and we are only our best advocates, we generally usually teach every kid in the school and we have interactions technically with every parent in the school. So you're totally right. You got to know how to deal with the parents and deal with the coworkers and deal with admin because you are one of the faces of the school. Um, so my question to you is when I worked at charter school and correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, but this is how I felt about it. I was like, okay, you, you might have facilities that, you know, are unique and present challenges, uh, equipment, 
uh, budget could be at times a little low, uh, but the, the, the shining star and the thing you need to focus on is you're there to serve the students, you're there to help the parents, and you're there to serve the administration and be a team player. That being said, I think any young PE teacher that's listening to this is one thing that you could help that school with is maybe raise the funds for physical education. And, and how you do that is, to be honest, in my experience with charters, you got to do it yourself. And how I did it was a jogathon. Is there any strategies that you and Miles, you can answer this too, you're at the same school, any strategies that you guys have to raise like some funds when you need to get equipment for your students to best serve them? Do you have any tricks up your sleeve to make some money for your programs? That's a really good question. I don't, honestly, I don't have a ton of experience with that. I Jogathons for sure, um, that was a good, and. Um, I did um, once, actually, this is kind of fun. We just asked for, um, it was like a garage clean out. Um, basically, it was like a call for equipment and a call to the families. Like if you have stuff in your garage, um, like sports equipment that you are no longer using to donate it. Um, and I actually got some really rad stuff that year. I got like a full set of random hockey sticks and I got like some football um, mark field markers and all sorts of neat stuff. Um, so that was a another kind of more creative way. But I know Miles. I know you have more experience with that for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think I think donations is a great way to go, and I think that's something that oftentimes we forget about. And um, I think that's one thing about charter and, and private schools that is nice is that the, the families are choosing to go there. So, like you said, you need to know your you need to know who's choosing to go there. But once you know that, um, you know, you you really can kind of ask them for their support um, with that. And so again, whether that's donations, um, I know a jogathon, you know, it, it does work great um, when you get the opportunity to do it. Um, a lot of parents buy in and come volunteer and help out. And um, one thing that worked great when we did a jogathon was uh, we had a, an ex Marine that was there, an ex Marine drill instructor who basically just stood out on the blacktop the whole time. And, you know, in a, in a more kid friendly way, it was very motivating. So, I mean, that, that's a great way, you know, to do that. And again, you kind of have more of that freedom, I think at a charter school, a, a, you know, or maybe a private school where you're a little bit more direct contact with your directors. Um, you know, at, at public school, I think, you know, you, you may get some funding, but once it runs out, I don't think there's as many avenues to go pursue really like getting your own. So it, it yeah. it's all kind of, you have to just get to know where you're at, but I think you hit the nail on the head. Like my advice to any teacher, PE teacher listening to this is you have to scan your environment. So for my experience is like at Bishops, I've never asked them for funding or money because I wouldn't want to insult them and say, let's do a fundraiser in a place like Bishops in La Jolla. You go to your athletic director and you say, hey, this is what we need. And they, they've been doing it for years. And they go, yes, we will get you that equipment. And that's the way you go about it. Um, at a public school, I think you got to scan your environment. Like when I was in Encinitas, uh, the Waltons were there, the Walton family, Bill Walton's great. So I knew basketball was huge. So we could do some basketball fundraisers and they get behind it. So that gets to Miles' points. you got to scan your environment. you got to know what you're dealing with. And then uh, – you know, one of the charter schools, we couldn't do a jogathon, but we had some restaurant owners that were really influential in the school and they would just come and sell their restaurant food and we would get a portion of it. And it, it worked. So I think you just got to be creative, but you guys, it seems like you are at your school and that's awesome. So. It, uh, I guess, I mean, it's a little bit of a, I guess, a hot topic. I mean, I don't want to go like down a weird hole, but we're talking about charter schools and private schools and public schools. Um, do you like um, do you like having those options and, and having you know school choice for for families? Do you, have you seen it be a benefit as a teacher? Oh, I mean, well, yeah, you know, working in a private school and a charter school, absolutely. I, I think I've seen upfront um, how school choice can be really beneficial. Um, yeah, you know, I, it's a complicated. I think it's a really complex issue and. Um, the more I learn, um, you know, I, I think there's a lot to learn there. I, I'm a huge fan of school choice, um, but I think that we need to make sure that it's equitable and um, that all kids have access. And, and so I think 
I would love to see, you know, our amazing charter schools get, um, ha- expand more and, and allow more choice um, for kids who are coming from all, um, all areas. Yeah. Yeah, and coach, not to backpedal a little bit, but it's a, a question I always love to ask you teachers. Obviously, I'm sure you have your soccer unit, your basketball unit. We, we all do that in softball or whatever. Is there a particular unit that's your pride and joy that you're like, you know what, I have my stamp on that. If someone walks at the school, it's kind of your baby. For our viewers out there, is there one that you want to share and say, hey, this, this works great for middle school and why? Um, Miles might laugh, but um, pickleball is my, (laughs) no, I I really love pickleball. That is my, one of my favorite um, things to introduce. Um, It works really well in small spaces. I think it works really well in middle school. Um, So that, that has been one of my favorite units to teach. Um, And am I, so at, at my previous school, I was actually able to do a really rad unit where um, we called it the lifetime activities unit. And um, really the whole goal here was like, let's expose these kids to all sorts of ways that you can um, be active throughout your life. So instead of just, you know, drilling in the team sports. And I realized I was really privileged to be able to do that because we were able to um uh, it, after a few years, it got built out into this really neat thing where I was able to take kids paddleboarding, teach them kayaking, um, and we did all sorts of stuff. We we did hiking. I realized I had the privilege of being able to um, take kids off campus and do these amazing things. But I think that you could get creative um, with finding lifetime activities that you could do on on campus um, and just finding ways to expose kids to all those different things. Well, that's fascinating because I've been doing PE now for uh, 15 years. And that's honestly one of the first times I've heard that. And I immediately like, I'm like, I'm going to call you after this. and we're gonna <laughs> because That was my it, baby at my old school. That was like my even pride. Even when you have a track in like uh, a pull-up bar, you can still say, hey, we're going to, because for me as a PE teacher, I'm always trying, I talk to him about, I'm like, I want some more creative units, you know, just something Mm -hmm. a little bit more. And even if you just go to him and say, hey, we're going to teach you how to, because this is a lifestyle in San Diego, you have to be active out here, you're running at the beach, playing golf. And I I like that. I think even if you don't have that much equipment and you're on campus at the elementary or middle school level, you could totally come up with something creative and uh, it might spark a plug with our uh, turn on a light for those students that are maybe not as engaged in PE and they like that unit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, it's funny that you said that. I mean, I I know pickleball is one of your favorites, but uh, I mean, just looking as another teacher, you did a great job running a flag football unit, but I've always thought lifetime sports are really important. Um, You know, I, I love, you know, to try and make a space for tennis. It's sometimes been difficult. Mm. But, oh, uh, I wish. Yeah. It's fun. Uh, pickleball is great. Um, yeah. Golf. And like you said, I think, again, knowing your school and knowing where you can go. I mean, I know at our past campus, I was able to walk to a nearby golf course and, um, you know, we can fit that in, in a little bit of a creative way. So, you know, teachers just need to, to kind of get to know not only their, the small school surrounding, but also what's, what's available to them. Um, when it comes to other kind of units that you do um, or that you enjoy doing that you think are a little bit different, maybe off the beaten path, whether it comes to maybe health or um, again, maybe even another sport that people don't often think of as just PE. But like you said, in California, it's not a huge push for like health class through, you know, K through 12, um, you know, you're kind of mandated to get it in high school at some point, but that's really about it. Um, so, you know, what units do you like to try and fit in, you know, on top of the sports and the lifetime, you know, sports and stuff that you enjoy doing? Yeah. Well, first I want to go back. I really, Miles, you said something really key that I would just want to really emphasize because I th- it took me a while to figure this out it's so important to get to know your surrounding community and see what sort of resources you have, because you're right, Miles, if you have a park nearby or 
some sort of community resource like a um, tennis courts or anything like that. If you if your school is okay with it, being able to take kids off is such a great resource. Um, so yeah, uh, units that are off the beaten path. Um, well, I really like doing team building. Um, I think that's really fun to do, especially at the beginning of the year. Um, I've also, you know, I've taught yoga. I really like teaching yoga. I know that, um, again, you have to kind of read the climate of your school. Um, you know, at my previous school, that was um, a really nice fit. And, um, the, you know, I, I had a really lot of, a lot of great feedback. Um, so teaching yoga and like relaxation and, and breathing exercises is kind of an alternative to my program was really, really fun. Um, and I really, yeah, Miles, I really like teaching, you know, at our school, we kind of incorporate health into our curriculum and that's been really fun. I've really enjoyed doing that with you, Miles. Um, so I think it's, we've kind of like sprinkled health in, um, throughout the year. And I think that's really important. And, you know, this year we've been really focused on SEL and I think social emotional learning is such a good fit for PE. And um, I'm actually after this year where we've been really focused on, on working on those topics a lot, I really am inspired actually to try to find a way to like, kind of um, mesh it into, you know, my PE program and combine it all together, so. Yeah, I think, uh... You know, doing doing team sports is one of the things to me that sometimes, at least, I, I remember being you know in in college and having our professor kind of tell us that, you know, you, you don't want to do team sports too young necessarily, or or with um, even with middle school. There's you know you, you have to break people into teams, and then you know there's going to have kids with hurt feelings. But uh, I think you said it um, earlier is that you know, they are having to work through some of those things and you can fit in those, those kind of wellness and social emotional kind of learning within those team sports, because they're having to work together. Um, you know, there's going to be some hardships with that too, but, um, yeah, I think it definitely can be fit in. I think it's a lot more seamless than some people want to make it seem at times. Yeah. Um, you know, okay. That was a good chunk today from Miss Miss McNamara. I uh, love her talk about lifetime sports. I think those are great, um, you know, paddle, racket kind of sports. And we look forward to her tomorrow jumping right into talking about how she likes to do her grading. That's one thing as physical educators, I know we're always constantly kind of looking at what is the best practice, what will work for me, and, and that's one thing that she'll touch on a little bit tomorrow. So looking forward to, to her sharing how she does grading and this was a great episode today talking about some, some really cool units and then also some differences in, you know, those charter schools and, and some fundraising ideas as well. So, you know, get out there, stay motivated, even if you're not able to be in the classroom right now. Physical education is definitely important for our kids. And uh, we hope that this is helping people out. You know, s subscribe to us on YouTube so you know when there's new content. Listen to us uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. And we look forward to bringing you guys more content tomorrow. Hey, we want to thank our sponsor, One Stone Apparel. They do great physical education clothes, made us this great polo for valuable coaching, and they do awesome vocabulary tees, perfect for physical education, they got great words on the back, you can customize them, great artwork, easy to work with, Dave at One Stone Apparel, check them out, onestoneapparel.com.